Welcome to this video on report layouts in Business Central. So report layouts is a, is a new page that's been added uh, in Business Central. Actually came in uh, a release earlier in the year, so it's not a brand new feature, but with it does come um, a feature that's been released as part of the October release, which is the ability to select which layout you want to use when you're running the report. So I thought we'd do a video sort of putting the two together, how they can be used, um, what I think report layouts has been designed for, it's some of its shortcomings still, and where we can use it, how it's used, and then finally run the report where we can select which layout we want to do. So I've, I've done a video on this in the past, um, that historically report layouts in Business Central, we had an area called custom report layouts, which still exists. And in here, we can create a new layout. So I do new, I'd know the report ID. So if I was doing a new invoice, I'd do like 1306, select insert word layout, do okay. It'd create me a copy of the sales invoice here, copy of built-in layout. Lots of issues with that. You can see which ones I've got built in against them. Lots of issues with that. For example, if I went in again and didn't properly name it and I wanted to create another one, insert word layout, okay. They've got exactly the same name. So I'd have to export or run one to work out which one was which if I'd import a layout. And then typically, um, from my experience, so many people then use this as the basis to start their reports and then do export layout, open a, the word file that it's pumped out, which would be basically the standard layout that Microsoft ships with for sales invoices. And then you'd use this as your basis to create your layout on because it's got the data set in it. There's other ways around it. It's not the only way, but I just know probably, or if you've already got some layouts created, you can sometimes drop them on first. But I think one of the more common ways is people drop this out it's got the data set in here then they then work on it and go through what they want to add into the file because if i was just to open a word document from scratch obviously it doesn't know and i could point it to the data set but it's not quite as easy i go into developer on map and paint it has no idea what it's pointing to it can't see the report data set so i could get a layout created in here but i wouldn't be able to map the fields without first putting in the custom xml path so just from experience I think a lot of people tend to do this as their starting point. They'll come in here and say, Ollie's invoice, export that out, do their change. Now they might export that out. One of the really good, cool things with Word reports, you can export that out. So it's got the data set tied to it. And then you can use some of the standard Word features. So I could, if I wanted to create this based off a um, template, so I could have a template and port it straight in. It would already do all the visual changes for me. And I just have to go in and remap the fields anywhere I saw fit. Um, if I've already done a word report in the past, if I've got like my own word report template, I could just import that straight off the bat into here. And when I export it out, it'd have the relevant data set against it. So there's, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, well, there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. They're the two most common ones. Some people would straight away import a layout they had that might just be visual, put it in there, get so it gets the data set, pump it back out and map the fields, or someone pull it straight out. They're, typically that's from my experience what most people do here. Now, it is quite convoluted this process and it still confuses people to this day because I've now got an invoice here, Ollie's invoice. Now to get this to run when someone goes to post sales invoices, I have to then do reports, layouts, selections. And in here, I then have to search for my 1306 and I have to say, use a custom layout. Another frustrating thing is I have to click off that onto custom report layout brings up the pop-up then i'm going to say i want it to use ollie's invoice all i'm telling it here is any time that report 1306 is pulled from the system use ollie's invoice layout now i also then have to tell it to well i have to check in this case it already is but i have to check so if i was using a new layout uh, a new report id sorry but it's also going to call that report id so report selections have been in been central now forever i go to report selection sales i do uh, invoice 1306. I've got to then also make sure that it's pointing to 1306 because there is other invoice IDs in Business Central, some legacy ones. Um, and also I could have created a bespoke, maybe I wasn't using an extension, I was using it as a bespoke sales invoice. I'd have to put that report ID in here, otherwise it won't run. And then you've also got to make sure that against customers, you don't have any report layouts set against these as well, because then that will overwrite what you've got set in there. So if someone's come in here and done um, document layouts, 
and it already put in a report ID here that isn't 1306, then every time I run for a Dartum, it will still run what they've got on here rather than what's in the default. So there's a few places you have to check stuff. It does get quite messy, it does get quite confusing for certain people. Um, so I believe, well, I assume that's one of the reasons Microsoft then introduced something called report layouts. So this is a page that was um, released as part of the um, release wave one of this year, I believe. It might have been before that, but I believe it's a really release wave one. And it just lists every single um, report layout that's built into the system. Okay. It also facilitates the Excel reports, uh, which I might go into in another video. Um, facilitates you being able to create Excel reports now, which is something again they released earlier in the year. So what I would do here for Ollie's layout is I would search again for my 1306. Now, <clears throat> one thing that does get confusing here is if you've got people using the legacy custom layout, you'll see it hasn't got Ollie's layout in here. So it doesn't show in report layouts, it only shows ones that have been created from the screen. So you've just seen custom report layouts, I have multiple for 1306, but it doesn't know any of them. It only knows the two base ones that have been created in here, ones that I've created from the screen. So that's the first issue. Um, things can get um, confusing for people because if someone has started to use custom layouts and then we're now going to say, right, we're going to use report layouts to understand what layouts we have in the system, we're going to, people are going to get confused quite quickly. So it's within report layouts, if I search 1306, you'll see I've got two um, layouts already built in here, an RDLC one and the sales invoice. The sales invoice one, this docx one would be the Word document, be the same as one I just did a copy of in custom layouts. Now, the thing here is you would first have to probably do export layout to export out the Word file, standard invoice sales three, then do new layout. And I'll show you what I mean. So when I click new layout, it's going to ask me for a report ID. So again, 1306, um, so I'm doing that and I'll call it Ollie, Ollie's invoice. I'll call it invoice for Ali's customers. Now format options, that's Excel, the new one I was talking about. I do words, so that's what I do. I leave ticks on available in all companies, that's preference, but I'll just leave that on. Um, I then do OK against that. And then it's going to ask me now to choose a file. So I've got already have that word file ready created. Whereas when we did it from custom report layouts and we did new, we can then pull that, copy the stand-in file, I could then pull that down. Um, it's, I expect me to already have a file ready to go here to, to put in. So when I spoke at the beginning of the video, that there's sort of multiple options that people tend to either, if they want the data set in, you would have to export the layout first before you can put it in. I think that's a bit of an oversight person. I think it's better at this point if it would let me download a, a, the standard layout if there was one. Because um, now if I was to do cancel, for example, it just hasn't created it. See, so I have to know. So I exported that layout before, so I'd have to know to come in here and do 1306. Ollie's invoice. Ollie's, Ollie's invoice again. Select Word. Do OK. Choose the file as that one that I've just downloaded, which is this one. And now I've got Ollie's invoice in there. Then I'd have to do um, export layout, and or I think I can just do edit info actually. Now I do have to do export layout, export it out, do my changes, import it back in, which is just another replace layout here. So it goes some way um, to trying to bring this all into one screen. Um, and again, if I was to change this invoice, I could then do set default here. And what that'll do is that'll make that, that basically removes the need for me to go into custom report layouts and say, 1306 use Ollie's invoice. It'll just go, right, okay. Ollie's invoice is now be run anytime 1306 is run. Now, it doesn't mean that if this still wasn't set, if 1306 still wasn't the report selections in sales, it still wouldn't work. So I've had a few people that have got confused with that. Let's say we've deployed a bespoke layout. Let's say 5001 is a sales invoice here. They've come in, created their layout against it and gone set default. Now all that's done is set that layout to be the default for 5001. It hasn't set it in the sales, um, in report selection sales. So there's still multiple screens you have to jump around to get things working. Um, but that'll essentially now give us three layouts that we'll be able to see when we try and run a sales invoice. So if I now um, come back out here, I could run this from here directly, by the way. Same kind of customer layouts if you want to check how it's looking. I run that directly here. So if I run one, I've, all I've done is exported the standard one and imported it back in. But you could see for argument's sake, this could be a separate layout to what this one was, for example. And they could be two different layouts for two different reasons. So this one could be with a certain type of branding on it, with different terms on it, with some blurb on it that's different to this one that we want to send out to different customers. 
Now in the past in Business Central, we've tried putting, we've had to make use of things like rules. So again, in against the customs where we can set document layouts, we might say for a dart and we want to send them Ollie's invoice, but for School of Fine Art, we want to send the built-in one which works great, but there is occasions where people will say at a, you know, a document by document level, or even at a, you know, a, an undefinable um, level, we want to sometimes send them a different invoice. We want to sometimes send them invoice B instead of invoice A. So that's what um, having report layouts on the request page now in Business Central let you do. So if I go to a posted sales invoice, and look at a datum here, if I print that now, there is now a new option on the request page. It's called Report Layout. So because I set all these invoices to default and there is nothing against a datum set specifically to say run a different layout, it's going to suggest to run Ollie's invoice. So that'll be the default. So nine times out of ten, I'm going to go, yep, yeah, print, send, whatever. But if I drill into that now, it'll give me all the ones that were in Report Layout. So it'll give me the standard sales invoice and frustratingly the RDLC one. Um, which I can't delete and do anything with, so which I don't think is particularly end user friendly. Um, you're going to get end users saying, "What's this one here for?" I only want to see the ones that are relevant to me, um, and unless anyone knows otherwise, that's um, that's tough. So if I do delete here, it'll say I can't delete a built-in layout. See, so they're going to have to just see this extra noise in here. It also doesn't show any of the custom layouts, as I mentioned before, that are in custom report layouts. This is only ones that've been set in report layouts. If I come into here and search for 1306, you'll see we have multiple. These don't show, so it has to be done by the report layout screen. So anything anything going forwards that you want to use is has to be done via report layouts. So I could have wanted to say for this one, I want to send out standard sales, standard sales invoice. Again, not great naming, can't change the name of it. Um, so I suggest in production uses, we tell users to ignore the top two and we'd list any that they want to use down here. Okay, so I could then select standard sales invoice and it'll print that one instead. So if I was to send that to um, email or print that one out, it would print a slightly different layout. So that's the two use cases that I can see for that. Like I said, report layouts is a step in the right direction for document layouts. I still think it, there's a lot of gaps missing in it. Um, and there's still some areas where this can be simplified and run down a little bit and also improve specifically around um, maintaining this list or at least being able to manage this list in terms of what an end user will see when they when this gets exposed to an end user, what they see and make it look a little bit more user friendly. But um, it also gives us the opportunity to, from within this to um, create things like Excel uh, layouts, which I'll go into in another video. Um, and it would also you know, allow me to create multiple RDLCs if I want to, but it's just for the most part it's Word reports that get, that get um, created as custom layouts now. Hope you enjoyed the video um, and I'll post another one up around Excel.